hear from God and your mouth will be short. There's no how you will receive a revelation from Jesus and you will, not, you will be able to contain it. Let's continue. He now told them, go back, let me see that part. Okay, continue. He said, come see a man which told me all things that I ever did. Is not this the Christ? She said, to him, come and see you. <laughs> There's one man like that at that well. He told me everything about my life. You know, when Jesus Christ is talking to you, even the things that only you know, he will bring it out. He actually did this. When Jesus Christ reveals himself to you, you know, we are planning nights of worship now, right? Most of us here yeah, that are not in prayer and worship, we are doing, maybe I will come, maybe I will not come. I don't know how it's going to be. I'm not just praying and worship again. I want to come again with all the plenty scenario. If you are not expecting that day, even though you come and stay here and do everything, you won't receive. Jesus will not reveal himself to you. Now, he was like, and she was like, then, when she went out and she came on to, and they, and came on to him, continue. Okay, after she finished giving the testimonies, she was able to gather people and they came on to him. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed, with, prayed him saying, Master, eat. <laughs> now, I want to understand something. As a child of God, for you to continually give out to people, first of all, you must understand your purpose. If you don't understand your purpose, you can be swayed by wind of doctrine. Every wind of doctrine, not even some. Now, when they brought the food, you can imagine, Jesus Christ knew he had planted a seed already. He knew what he did. Of course, is Yahweh Elohim. He knows everything. But he knew. So he was actually expecting the results of his impartation. Uh -uh. He was waiting. So they now brought food and said, Jesus, come and eat. Imagine that kind of awkward situation. Maybe as he was eating, and they now, all those people now came and met him. Distractions. Some of us, even after impacting and planting, we get what? Distracted that we don't wait for the results. We get too distracted, carried away by minor things like food. Water, juice. I'm like me now, I like juice very well. And then the next thing he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Please, what's the time? Okay, I'm running up now. Therefore said the disciples one to another, at anyone brought him, brought Wait, had any man brought him all to eat? I will use my translation. 33. Did someone bring food, bring him food while we were gone? Can you imagine this kind of shallow mind they had? Did he eat when I was not around? Some of us are like monitoring spirits. We want to monitor everything that somebody is doing. He said, then Jesus explained, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and finishing from his work. Ye know the saying, four months being planting and harvest. But I say, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. The harvesters are paid good wages and the fruits they, and, and the fruits they harvest is people brought to internal life. Jesus understood his purpose. Jesus knew that the only thing he was here to do on earth was to do what? Win souls. So when he knew he had done something, he was waiting for the result, and they were bringing a, like, like all these distractions. He told them, wait, this is not the reason why I came. Some of us, even when we are fasting, and the Holy Spirit is just, at that point, maybe we are planning six to six fast, and the Holy Spirit at five minutes to six, that's when the Holy Spirit starts speaking to us. We just said, okay, don't worry, round up. Next time when I fast, we continue from here, we stop. <laughs> you are not he's telling you, okay, this is, and you'll be like, no, wow, time don't go. You pray, and you just, okay, don't worry, don't worry, next time, next time. Or maybe when I'm, eat, as I'm eating, you just be explaining to me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And Jesus Christ now answered them. He said, I sent you, verse 38, I sent you to harvest where you didn't plant. Others have already gone to do their work. Now you will get there to gather the harvest. Now 39, Many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman, because of what 
mm-hmm. believe. Okay, many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, he told me everything I ever did. Now, the first way for God to break through a, a sinner is you. The word of your mouth. Your testimony. Now, I want us to follow it. And he now said, when they came out to see him, they begged him to stay in their village. So, he stayed for two days. Long enough for many more to hear his message and believe. Then they said to the woman, now we believe. Not just because of what you told us, but because we have heard him ourselves. Now we know that he is indeed the savior of the world. Now, it was just these people that got the revelation first that Jesus Christ was the savior of the world. Do you understand? Jesus Christ used one woman. Send the woman to the village. Even though he didn't tell her, go. He knew what he did, and she went. And she started talking and talking and talking. You see, when your, your work is just to make them hear, the Holy Spirit does the conviction. Now, they were convicted after Jesus Christ spent time with them. They now knew that of a truth, this man is the savior of the world. Praise the Lord. So we as Christians, we should not allow, we should always have to do what? We should always have to do what? Ah, now wow. We should have to do what? (laughs) Don't be stingy with what the Holy Spirit has placed in your hearts. Because until you share, they will not have the conviction. They will not be convicted. Actually, Jesus just teaches us evangelism. Jesus Christ just taught evangelism here. Practical teaching. You have, right? I have. Okay, show me what you have. This is what I have. What I have, is it not better than what you have? It's not that you go and tell them that what you have is better. The Holy Spirit will give you direction on what to see and what to do and how to do. And after that, the what? She realized ah, it's true. And she said, ask him. Now, in two ways, for you to receive from God as a child of God, I'm rounding up now, for you to receive from God as a child of God, you have to be inquisitive. Even the Bible said, they that hunger shall be what? Filled. You must be hungry. Please, how many of you, please, if, I, if you know that I just finished downing one bowl of manka now and I come and miss you, and even though you are eating and you have much to spare, will you give me to eat? How many of you would give somebody that you know is filled food to eat? No. You even call it, the same person is a gluten. <laughs> but when you know that that person is hungry, you do what? You give. That's the same thing with God. When he sees that you're hungry, he does what? He feeds you. He gives you. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm, on, I'm going to give you um, the last point. For I'm going to give you the point. So just write down for those of us that are writing. I've explained the topic already. Point what did I stop in? Point three, right? <laughs> okay, our traditions. and Okay, the, okay now that is from the woman, right? The, what the woman had. Now, what Jesus had to give to her. Write it that way. What Jesus had to give. And Jesus had to give, and she allowed Jesus. Don't forget. Jesus had something to give to her, but the line of trans, of, um, um, what do they call that thing? Impactation occurs from when you allow. It's just like the capillaries. You understand? Now, there's a particular line where the oxygenated blood becomes what? Oxygenated. Now, if there's a problem with that, what happens? The exchange cannot occur. We are medical students here. There's a particular line where there's an exchange. Now, if there is a problem with that capillary, with the capillaries, the oxygen cannot be oxygenated. The oxygenated blood cannot become oxygenated. That's the way it is. It's just a very thin line. Very, very thin. But at the same time, too, it's very powerful. You allowing the Holy Spirit to do what only him can do. Praise the Lord. Now, for, on the part of Jesus, Jesus Christ gave her living faith. Gave her the knowledge, the second point, gave her the knowledge about the Father. Then the last, gave her a revelation of himself. I explained that already. A revelation, he revealed himself to her. Yes, I am the Messiah. First, he said, Believe me. Those that worship the Father must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. 
in the last point, the revelation of who? Himself. I am the Messiah. Praise the Lord. God only reveals himself. The bottom line is God only reveals himself to those who are expecting, those who are waiting upon him. Let's stand up on our feet as we pray. If you are not expecting God, don't think he's going to come. God shows himself mightily to those who are expecting. He's spontaneous, yet he comes with an invitation. You have to be ready. You have to be expectant. I don't know. Today we are talking about the Samaritan woman, but some of us are in the church and we still have the characteristics of the Samaritan woman. You are unsatisfied. You have low self-esteem and you cover it with pride. You have a lot of things that you don't like about yourself, but you look good on the outside. I want you to close your eyes. I'm going to tell God. God, exchange these things for living water. You look at yourself every day. Sometimes you cry in front of the mirror. You're living a double standard life. You've never seen anything good about your life, about your family. You came from a particular background that it's just not good. You've never enjoyed life before. Or you have gone through struggles that just inhibits the power of God in your life. God is trying to say those troubles and those struggles are not meant to inhibit. They are meant to break you to the state of you allowing me to make you satisfied. True satisfaction comes from me. God is speaking to you today. He said, allow me to give you living water. Bitterness, greed, unforgiveness. Those things you decide to marry that he has not placed in your life. Even the one you are struggling with now, that you are living with right now. Those things, you know yourself. It is the Holy Spirit alone that can convict and bring out those things from your life. But like I said before, many of us will be here today but will not be impacted. On. God forbid that I will come to the presence of a king and go empty handed. God refused that I come to his presence and go the way I came. God is trying to make you understand. Be like that Samaritan woman. Whatever sin you are struggling with. Some of us are struggling with pornography. It's a struggle. Some lies. Those things that you know you are struggling with. You exaggerate too much and you say it's exaggeration. It's a lie. talk too much. You behave anyhow. Even you sometimes, when you look at yourself, you go to your room and you cry because of those things that are living with you or that you are living with. God is saying, come, let me give you something better. God is saying, come, let me empty you of the junk and give you something struggling with. You know, sometimes we Christians, we have this thing, this way of thinking that, oh, maybe before we come to God, people will look at you. It's a lie. It's between you and your God. So 
our vision is actually in the spirit. You don't need to even wait for the rapture to start. If you die today, you die even in that thing, you die in that thing, where are you going to? Jesus Christ has proposed living water to you. Eternal life. Life of eternity. So when he has proposed it, if anything should happen to you today, what would you tell the world? understanding of why we always say Or maybe I need to meet John, I 